this is going to be a spectacular start to this week's vlog. We have a, a full-time vendor who does not have a show to go do this weekend, and when he doesn't, he typically just opens his garage and sets up at his house and lets people come by for a couple hours on the day, and he's calling it Super Bowl Con since it is Super Bowl Sunday. The wife's working the morning shift. My mom just picked up the midgets for church. So I'm going to take advantage of the opportunity to get out in a little rainy weather and go go see Mike and go hang out for a few and just look at some comics. Just, it'll be fun. It'll be fun. Be sure to check out Cherry Pickers. I don't know if it's collectibles or comics, but Cherry Pickers is his name on social media. He's on Facebook. He's on Instagram. He's an Augusta local. So if you're in the area doing shows and stuff or going by to little shows and all that kind of stuff, be sure to try to find him out there. So, uh, yeah, let's see what he's got. He's got some cool stuff. I mean, he always does, but hopefully, we have some fun. You don't need more comics. Like, honey, <laughs> just looking for a few things. Yes, I'm sure she will. Yeah, I'm lucky. My, my wife collects purses, so I'm just like, oh, get out of jail free card, right? You don't say anything, I won't say anything. Yeah. <laughs> They saw a little bit of the footage from the setup. I really don't want to like interrupt people while they're trying to look and everything, but I wanted you to see it's a good layout of stuff. All the boxes up against the wall were all marked down to 50 cent. He's just trying to move stock. You know, he, you know, that back stock collects and builds up so fast when you're buying collections and stuff. But I found some cool stuff. Um, definitely will share these out later as well. But I got Captain Marvel Jr. number 57 from 1948. It's got some extra love to it and everything, but I got a killer price on it. It's a piece of history. I flipped through the whole thing. It's all there. It's got some tape on it, uh, keeping the edges from crumbling. And the tape is even older than my parents are. I mean, you couldn't pass it up. I found these awesome Marvel Age still poly bagged. What's cool about this is I didn't have one of these still poly bagged. And it's got the Joe Jesco card, which I have, but I wanted this. So I got two because I might know another big Hulk collector out there. Wasn't sure if he had it. And of course... Anytime I come across them, boom, Turok number one's 50 cent a piece. And then out of the dollar bin, I picked up some more of the Justice League Dark. Clayton Clayton Crane covers, got the Wonder Woman. Got the whole team, which I think I might have this one. But I'm trying to put the set together just for fun. I'm probably just end up selling it off. Ultimate Iron Man number one, I have this, but it'd be fun to have for a giveaway. And then we've got the uh, Heroes Reborn Iron Man, which I was just talking about on a live stream. Now, this one's so undervalued underlooked at and uh, just beautiful beautiful cover that wills portachio things how you say it and i did pick up a pretty decent book 1974 the very first time this artist did uh work for comic books and it's a first appearance this is astonishing tales 25 featuring Deathlock. 
boom, for, first George Perez work, and it is a pretty copy. It really is. This one's going to have to go out to get graded. I'm I'm guessing it would come back a uh, anywhere between a 7.5 and an 8.5, really, as long as the inside is just as pretty as the outside. This is this was a huge, huge cool find. He gave me a killer deal on all this stuff. Again, if you're in the area and stuff, if you do cons in the southeast, you, you got to go holler at Cherry Pickers. His name's Mike. Let him know that. Uh, let him know that you found him. Or uh, I told you guys to go look. He'll definitely look out for you guys. He's a great guy. So yeah, be sure to check him out. So I always like including some kind of unboxing in these videos. It's definitely a great way to get through some of this giant stacks of mail I have in a package I'm extremely excited for came in. If you follow my content at all, you know I've been all over this stuff from jump. Let's check it out. So this one came from Canada from a shop called Gotham Central Copper. This was a book that when it came to retailer exclusives and stuff, went way under the radar. And this is number 111 out of 500. Johnny Desjardins, Desjardins, Ghost Machine number one. Look at that. We got Rook, Junkyard Joe, Direwolf, and Geiger himself. Look at that. Look at the crazy, let me see if I can find it. Look at the crazy detail, the style, everything. That is absolutely wicked. <clears throat> and this one is number 104 of 500. Got the really cool certificate of authenticity in there. Really wicked book. Get on that ghost machine train. This is the first appearance of numerous characters for this company. Uh, I mean, you get into the front end and these exclusives, you know, I don't know how many people speculate in this kind of thing. I just think it's a cool cover. I want this ghost machine stuff. I want it all. And uh, that's what I'm doing. What is up, comic fans? It is the greatest day of the week. It is Tuesday. That means new DC books at ABX Comics and Games right here in good old Augusta, Georgia. Link in the description for these guys. The best of the best. I'm excited to see what's in to hang out with the comic Viking for a few minutes and rocking the Heroes Con shirt today. Be sure, drop me a comment. Let me know. Are you going to Heroes Con this year? Charlotte, North Carolina, weekend of June 16th. It is the con to be all cons. It is the one that matters. The only one that matters. There's a lot of good ones out there, but it is the only great one. So let's see what ABX is rocking with today. Not the biggest week for DC, but we got some new series starting with the Sinister Suns and some other stuff dropping as well. Not a huge week. It's good to have a lighter one every now and then. The Marvel stuff getting processed for tomorrow. There he is again in his natural habitat. Pow! <laughs> Goodbye, my sweet prince. All right, so let's see what I picked up today. I've got the finale to Christian Ward's Batman City of Madness. This has been so dope. Can't wait to see how it ends. The brand new issue of Action Comics. We have, uh, what's his name, Jason Aaron taking on his first Superman story. I was impressed with that first one. We'll see how it goes. The Joker Year One Story Part Two. If you watched last week's vlog, it is crucial. Check that out. And this will definitely be a car line read today. I got to see what they're going to do with it. Green Lantern number six. My man Steve Beach is now on the covers over at Green Lantern. My goodness, look, look at that. This guy's artistic style is through the roof. Wesley Dodd Sandman, issue number five. I read this one early. Digital, fantastic series. That Riley Rosma art is, is solid for that story. And of course, I picked up some cool variants to do on the giveaway today. I probably showed those earlier in the stream. But uh, yeah, I appreciate everybody checking it out. Let's see what I got from Marvel and the Independents. It's definitely a light week on the Marvel Indie side. We have Night Thrasher, number one. Shout out to my boy Becker. Pick this up for him. We're going to give it a shot. We're going to give it a shot, but I'm not going to leave... Night Thrasher number one out, especially not with how much Becker loves him. Huge new Warrior fan. We also got Transformers number five, the penultimate issue for Daniel Warren Johnson's tenure on interior covers. Phenomenal, phenomenal. And last but not least, Rebel Moon issue number two. Yo, Daniel Warren Johnson with another cover. Look at that. He got the A cover for Rebel Moon. That is super dope. I'm excited to dive in and explore the Rebel Moon world some more. What'd you pick up this week? Leave me a comment. Let me know. First Carline read up today, Green Lantern issue number eight. This was fantastic. We are fully on into the second arc. Jeremy Adams is crushing it, diving into the where's and the why's of what's been going on with Green Lantern, really getting deep into a story finally. Kyle Rayner's on the cover and he's the backup story with Joe Mullins. It looks like we're bringing in all of the supporting Green Lantern cast. I mean, Kyle used to be a front runner, so I'm glad to see him getting some love. They're going to be cracking the case of the United Planets. Uh, we actually see the United Planets have their own ring core now. They're clearly the bad guys, let's call it. They're clearly blowing up all the batteries across the universe, trying to take over. It's a power move. 
but it's we're, we're diving into it. So good. So freaking good. It feels like we're getting into some depth and width to story. Like, get it, starting to scratch the surface of how how deep the story went with the Jeff John stuff. I'm excited to see what Jeremy Adams is going to do. If you read his Flash, you know that you cannot miss this guy. You've got to dive into his stuff. And Green Lantern's no different. Here we go. Part two of Joker Year One, Batman 143. Chip Zdarsky, this is solid. Two stories, the, the final Batman story with the Joker, a, a story set in the future, and the earliest origins of the Joker. Uh, some of my biggest concerns were actually ironed out in the best way possible. I caught it. The man that trained Batman and Chip Zdarsky is the knight. Came in the train to the Joker. And, of course, the Joker pulled a fast one and killed him in this one. Ultimate Joker, diving into the psyche of why we have three Jokers, adding more context to that kind of stuff is great. They're not killing any kind of mystique or mystery with the Joker. He's still the Joker. And the Sorrentino art in this, in that future story, is bar none some of the most gorgeous, haunting, wicked, nightmarish artwork I've seen in a while. This is only a three-issue story, I believe. It's coming out every week for three weeks. I highly suggest picking up and checking this out. It's tying into a lot of stuff. It's sourcing from a lot of earlier stories. Year Zero, Three Jokers, Killing Joke, all kinds of stuff. Amazing. All right, we're ending the week strong. Ending the week real strong. She's sneezing. Get it. Get it. Oh, there it is. Well, we're going to see Pete Davidson live in downtown Augusta. He's at the Miller Theater. Try to get a glimpse of the theater because they're going to lock your phones up for the show as they do with a lot of comedy shows. So uh, let's see if we can see it. Downtown Augusta is actually like really nice. they constantly doing a lot of work to kind of bring it back to life, keep it alive, stuff like that. But there's nice lights, old billboard. That's the Miller Theater up there. It was renovated completely. It's like from the early 1900s or something. It's really cool seeing like the old photos and stuff on the inside of what it looked like before it was bought out and uh, completely brought back to life. They actually get some good gigs and shows and do a lot of free stuff for kids days and stuff. It's really cool, but that's that's where we're heading. Go find some parking and then we'll head in there. Yeah, that was super fun. It was hilarious. He was doing his little rounds before he films another special, he said. And uh, yeah, it was it was pretty dope. I agree. Yeah, it was, I agree. It was funny, it kind of hit me at one point. I'm like, yo, this is the Transformer. This is this is Mirage. Yeah, it was definitely fun. Uh, yeah, Chris D'Elia, we saw on the board that he'll be coming to town in May. So I know not everyone's a fan of him, and they have their reasons. Oh no, we're going. But we're going. We're going, <laughs> we're going to go see Chris D'Elia. That'll be that'll be true. Girls. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, I appreciate everybody watching. I'm Mrs. Legion right there, and myself. Appreciate y'all. See y'all next time.